Unicommerce is a SaaS platform which caters to e-commerce companies to help them streamline their business operations. For instance, inventory management, order management. Unicommerce was founded in 2012 and is backed by Kunal Bell of Snapdeal and SoftBank. We have with us joining in the top management, Mr. Kunal Bell, promoter, non-executive director, and Kapil Makija, the MD and CEO. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. Today, Unicommerce is a fairly small company, 100 crores in terms of top line. What is the growth aspiration? We've always grown ahead of the market, Reema. And when the market was growing at 30% two, three years ago, we were growing at 50%. And last year, when the market, we feel, grew probably like uh, high single digits or low double digits, we, we were higher than that also. But at the same time, I think it is important to note that this is a business which has very high operating leverage. So even though that the revenues grew 15%, the pack doubled in a year. Mm. And that demonstrates the strength of the product and the high margin nature of the, of the business. So even going forward, we anticipate that as revenues grow, the profit should grow almost disproportionately with revenue growth. So to your mind, what are the steady state operating margins? Um, you know, most SaaS companies in this space tend to operate around 25-30% margin EBITDA. at steady, EBITDA margins at steady state. Um, we do anticipate at some point we'll also get there. However, it is important that we are uh, taking a cue from your earlier question to Kapil. We are still in the very early days of e-commerce in India. I remember 10 years ago uh, when I started my journey in e-commerce, people used to say nobody will buy anything online. Then they started buying phones. Then they said, oh, but they will not buy uh, apparel online because, you know, the fit is important. Then people started buying apparel. Then they said, but they will not buy shoes for sure. And then people started buying shoes and then beauty and then pharma uh, pharmacy products and then, you know, even grocery and food, everything. So we have always been surprised about how much growth there is left in e-commerce in India. And, and hence, given... Unicommerce is essentially an index to the e-commerce growth in the market, where as shipments of e-commerce grow in India, e-commerce volumes will also grow, and, uh, and unicommerce volumes will also grow, and unicommerce revenues will also grow, and by corollary, unicommerce profit should also grow. But what is your growth aspiration? Today it's a 100 crore revenue company. Uh, you know, it may be a 100 crore revenue company today, but our aspirations are very large. Um, uh, you know, we feel this is a like a multi-decade play, right? Where like similar to e-commerce. Well, it took you nine years to, it founded in 2012, you got in in 2015. So it's taken a while to get to the first 100 crores. Yeah, all great companies take a while to get to a certain scale. And we've been very patient, just to be very clear, like after the company was acquired in 2015, we have not raised a single rupee of primary capital to build this business, right? In an industry where you know primary capital raises are done often and spent, um, we have built this business with great degree of patience, great degree of poise, uh, and great degree of discipline around having consistent compounding revenue and profit growth. And our and our expectation going forward also is to continue to grow the business with the same level of discipline. Kapil, can you explain uh, the gross margins are very high for the company. They've been ranging between uh, roughly 78% for the last three yeah. years. But the operating margins as of last year was, say, 13.9%. What happens between the gross margins to the EBIT, at the EBITDA level? Sure. So in uh, gross margin, we have taken, uh, we have been a, taken a very intellectually honest approach there. So whatever direct expenses of the software as well as the people who are attributable directly to the business we are putting there, Beyond that, our investments go in building products, so our R&D expenses, as well as the expenses we incur in sales and marketing. These are our investment areas. So we continue. It's a, it's a very very e-commerce is at a very very nascent stage, as we initially described. There's a lot of innovation that's bound to happen. Uh, e-commerce e ecosystem has gotten complex over time, and the complexity will continue to increase in geometric progression. So there is a constant effort in ensuring that we are offering new products to the ecosystem to simplify e-commerce selling for them. So our investments go into not only building new products, but ensuring that we are investing appropriately in sales and marketing as well, so that the reach of these products to the ecosystem. Uh, there are two growth vectors for you. One is increasing the number of products that you cater to, and secondly is international expansion. Today, international is less than 4% of your revenues. The growth plans on both these two vectors. 
Yeah, so um, look, uh, most SaaS companies usually begin with having a hero product. That is their wedge in the market. That's why they become famous. That's why they get known. Um, for us, that's been our warehouse management software, our order management software, which process, you know, our warehouse management software powers over 8,000 warehouses globally. And our order management software processes nearly 800 million e-commerce orders a year, right? More than 2 million a month, uh, a day. So we have now achieved substantial scale and market leadership in both of these products. And as a result, have a large base of customers, right? Three and a half thousand plus customers, 800 enterprise customers, all of which has been growing year on year like clockwork. We do feel that this provides us a great foundation to now offer these clients of ours and new customers also products that will further simplify the e-commerce journey. As Kapil said, as e-commerce volumes are growing in India, the uh, complexity is growing very dramatically. You have multiple marketplaces, you have multiple logistics companies, you have multiple warehouse providers, you have multiple ERPs and so on and so forth. Someone needs to simplify this for a brand owner because for a for a brand owner, what is important is their brand, their product, their marketing, their brand story, uh, their customer experience. What we do is say, you focus on what you are great at, yeah. we will take care of everything else in the back end using our software. So we feel there is tremendous potential to constantly come up with new products. To so what are the new products? So yeah. for instance, we have launched UniShip, which is for shipping tracking. We've launched UniRecco, which is for reconciliation. One of the recurring problems we've seen from our brand partners, from our customers, is that they have sometimes no idea of how much money is due to them from a marketplace that they're selling on. And then every marketplace has a different way of doing payouts. We bring all of it into one place on UniRecco and give them a seamless dashboard of how much money is due to them and how, what are the debits and credits. And international expansion plans? So uh, we already are present in multiple countries. Uh, we are continuing to go deep in these countries for now, which is in Middle East and Southeast Asia. We feel these countries exhibit characteristics similar to India, where there are a lot of marketplaces, a lot of brands, and no domestic software providers of the quality of unicommerce. So we will continue to focus on these countries for now and, and grow, the, grow the revenue share from them. Um, since your growth is indexed or linked to the e-commerce growth, e-commerce companies, some of these e-commerce companies at the beginning are very bootstrapped. Uh, is it hard for you to sell SaaS products, which is a subscription-based business? Because I was looking at your uh, SMB client. In FY24, you had 2,700, which is lower than 3,000 that you had in the prior year. So, uh, any, uh, the, the platform is, uh, is, uh, is not only sector agnostic, so we serve diverse sectors. It is also scale agnostic. The platform is very relevant for a large enterprise, which is processing millions of orders in a month, to a small SME processing 500 monthly orders. All these SME small businesses have an aspiration to grow large, right? and for them to grow large in Indian e-commerce, they have to sell on multiple marketplaces, they have to deal with multiple logistics partners. And this becomes a life. There is a use them. case, no doubt for it. Yeah. But the question is, are they willing to part with money, which is so hard to come by in the early stages? So our uh, our model is transaction link. Our SMB plan is largely pay per use. So the number of transactions they process, they pay for so that. So what led to the decline in the SMB clients last uh, year? So the SMB clients, we continue to support them, but SMB clients, it's a very very volatile industry. Uh, we uh, we we started with an experiment wherein we were trying to see if we can get some of these SMB merchants online as well. And we wanted to control, we wanted to see how that experiment pans out. But we realized that we are a, we are a post-purchase enablement company. After they started getting orders, we cater to enabling their supply chain. So this experiment, while we try to do, but ultimately we realized that we are actually better off focusing on the post-purchase journey. That's why as part of this experiment, we had got a cohort of customers. Uh, ultimately, they were not getting an order. So we have kind of uh, continue to focus on our core products itself. But SMB, as the SMB scale up, SMB is a, is a big lever for us to, uh, to get a reach in the market. Today we serve about 3,500 plus clients, of which roughly about 2,700 are SMB customers. So as you rightly pointed out, there's a use case for the SMB customers as well. We continue to reach out to many SMB customers, get them on board, and as they scale up, some of them become come to our enterprise plan as well.
I think the important thing to note here is that 90% of our revenue is actually from enterprise customers. Okay. SMBs are, uh, you know, about 10% of our uh, revenue. So they contribute a very small percentage of our revenue. And in some, at some level, they serve as a funnel into becoming enterprise customers tomorrow or in the future. Um, but to, to further to Kapil's point, the SMB customer is a volatile customer in terms of there is a lot of churn where someone will start selling online and three months later realize they want to get out of it. So that part of the business will be a high churn business. But we are okay with that because one, that is uncontrollable. Honestly, someone wanting to shut down their business is not in Unicommerce's control. That said, uh, we will continue to invest in providing great products that are appropriate for the SMBs, hoping that many of them over time will grow and take on the enterprise plan, which is 90% of our revenue. Okay. Uh, Kunal, this IPO, there is no fresh money which is being raised, which will be utilized by the company. It's a pure offer for sale uh, and the percentage stake sold is fairly large. Why are you looking to partly check out? So, uh, personally, I'm not selling a single share. No, it, not uh, personally, but um, Ace Vector is. Ace Vector, our holding company, um, is selling a certain percentage of its holding. Not the majority of its holding, but a smaller percentage of its holding. Um, in order to make the statutory minimum of 25%. And so our goal is to essentially meet the statutory minimum of 25%. And that's why this is constructed. Actually, um, you know, we didn't have enough sellers uh, in the IPO and there were, hence there are only two sellers, which is SoftBank and our, uh, our holding company. You said the company has never raised money. It's never had to raise money. It's never needed to raise money. And even now you're not raising money. So to take us through the operating cash flows. What is the cash on the books? Cash at the end of FY24 is over 69 crores. Uh, and uh, we've, as a business, we've continued to generate cash on a regular basis. We've been profitable since FY21 and continue to have a strong uh, uh, cash flow coming into, into the business. So our internal accruals are enough. And during all this time, we have added new customers, we have built new products, and we have been able to do that through our internal accruals as well. And we built this business with great discipline where uh, we are very, very clinical about the investments that we are doing. We are very, very measured in terms of areas that we are investing. And that's sort of the DNA of the company, and we continue to build that way. And that's why since 2015, we, have, we haven't raised primary. We, we don't see the need right now because we feel that in terms of our growth plans, our internal accruals are enough to invest and continue to drive the growth that we are anticipating for the business. Kunal, one final question then on evaluation. The IPO is being priced in 93 times, trailing multiple. Some would say it's high. How would you respond to that? Look, uh, investors should make a, an informed choice whether this company makes sense for them to put their hard-earned money behind or not. We have put in our, uh, an incredible amount of effort over the last um, you know, close to 10 years in building this company. Uh, we built it with great discipline. We built it profitably. We are doubling our profits last year to this year. Our revenues are growing even in a slow e-commerce market. Um, you know, we feel that the company has a lot of potential. But on the valuation, I feel that investors should make an informed decision based on all the disclosures, abundant disclosures we've made. And, um, and if they feel that we are deserving of their trust, uh, we would obviously welcome them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kapil and Kunal, for joining in and speaking to us on CNBC TV. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you.